Hello everyone, all who are one body of Christ are here. Welcome to this joyous community together. Today we're meditating upon the heavenly transformation of earthly deferment. Before we start, let's just get talks on this topic. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, respo- responsive heart. Now let's see learn from the verse you just read. Leviticus chapter 26. The last two chapters of Leviticus provide us an explanation and sets our thinking straight to understand the reasoning behind a sacrificial system. It's easy to import our own ideas about what sacrifice means and accomplishes onto Leviticus, but we must let that text speak for itself. When we think about sacrifices, we often think of it like an equation. If I rack up 10 points worth of sin guilt, then I give 10 points worth of sin offering. Then I am right back and standing with God. But that is not how sacrifices work. That is because the sacrificial system does not stand on its own. It is a part of a larger con- covenant between Israel and God. The covenant was made in Exodus. God would be Israel's God, dwell with them, make them into a great nation, and bring them into the promised land. That was God's side of the deal. Israel's side was that they would keep God's commands, like the Ten Commandments. Simply put, that's the covenant. These two last chapters tell us what will happen if Israel breaks the covenant. What makes the equation version of the sacrificial system impossible is that God says he will not accept the sacrifices of the people if they do not keep his covenant. That means God does not have to accept the sacrifices prescribed in this book. The sacrifices clear a way for the people to be ready for God to commune with them. They do not force God to commune with them. God still maintains his sovereign choice. What's amazing about these last two chapters is God promises to always accept the offerings of his people who keep the covenant. Moreover, he won't only accept the offering, he will pour out the abundant blessings of healthy land, protection from enemies, and love a long life. Now the question is, what if the people break the covenant? God will break out against them. He will not accept their sacrifice, and the wrath of God will still be upon them. We will be kicked out of the land, our enemies will prevail, and blessings will be cut off. In fact, by the way God is ta- talking, it seems that this is exactly what will happen. And of course, in the hi- history of the Israelites, this is exactly what did happen. They were kicked out of their land, overtaken by their enemies, and lives with their cut short. God offers a lifeline to this people future people living exiled from the land. He says that if they repent and soften their heart towards God, he will return them to the land and bless them once again. But God says that the people won't repent and that they won't change their hearts. So here's the amazing part. God says that even though his people will utterly forsake him, hate him, break his covenant, and never repent, God himself, out of his great love, leans toward his people, to keep the covenant. He will make a way to bring them back despite of their sin. He will change their hearts no matter how hard they are. He will give them life no matter how close to death they come. This is God's vow to his people. To keep his covenant, God incarnated himself and lived among us. He pitched a different tent, the tabernacle of the human body and the person of Jesus. He established the new covenant and continued fulfillment of the covenant once and for all. With Jesus, we were able to accomplish absolutely everything prescribed in the book of Leviticus. He was the final offering, the final day of atonement, and the ultimate covenant keeper. Now we who are in exile anywhere can come to Jesus, put our hand on him through faith, and receive all the covenant blessings of God. We can be present with God. He will give us every spiritual blessing in Christ, and we will enjoy with him forever in the new heavens and the new earth. This message also gives a point to today. The promise is, I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through your through you before their eyes. Let's close this time in prayer together. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, mighty, wonderful God, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give our eyes to see the God who takes his covenant so seriously that no matter how much we break it, he will, he never will. And through what I have learned from this book of law will help me to have a perfect faith that by your holy and everlasting sacrifice, I have received my righteousness in Christ Jesus. And only because of Jesus, we can be brought near you forever. Lord, thank you for your all your glory and praise that belongs to my God who has saved me not 
dependent on my own righteousness. Instead, he has offered the one perfect and everlasting covenant fulfillment to bless me now and forevermore. Lord, I ask you to bless this devotional for me and many others who read and listen and change their hearts, their present and their future with the presence of Jesus in their hearts so we can all have a perfect relationship with you forever and ever. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Have a blessed day, everyone of God, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.